My name's Russ Cook and I'm attempting to become the first person ever to run the entire length of Africa. This is where I started, this is where I'm heading and this is where I am now. I've run 8,941 kilometres so far and I've got 7,658 left to go. So far on the mission. I've survived alone in the desert, pissed blood, been robbed at gunpoint, thought I was going to be killed in the jungle, had my support van smashed to bits and raised 106,000 quid for charity. In this episode, Stan goes on holiday, Jared makes his return, we visit a python temple and I turn to voodoo to heal my broken body. After hours at the Nigeria to Benin border due to overstaying our visa by one day, we finally made it into Benin where we immediately looked for a hotel. It was late into the night and we were worn out from playing mental chess with Nigerian border police, so me and the lads decided to call it a night before seeing anything that Benin had to offer. Bit of a hairy border crossing. So the guy who went with me to go and sort the car name, yeah. his boss had told him to get a bribe out of us. We were all ready to go, and then that guy got really upset because he realised he'd f***ed up by not getting a the concrete bribe out of us. Yeah. And now they'd already stumped us out. Yeah. And he was like, Big elf then. <laughs> and he was like, You know, you know, we can cancel your stamp out. And I was like, No, you can't, especially because we're in Benin. And he was like, But we're the police. And I was like, And we're in Benin. You're yeah. the Nigerian police. And he was like, I'm very disappointed in you. I thought we were friends. That's the classic line they give when they want money out of you. He was genuinely a nice guy, evidently, and he just realised he'd f***ed up because he, his boss had made him get a bribe out of us and couldn't. That's um, actually a big dub, that. That's pretty gangster from us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be I, if we'd I'm done anything. The guy. He's going to get a, a, a gentle telling off from his boss. They weren't going to let through. I didn't even tell you about it. They weren't going to let me through because I didn't have a yellow fever. Mm -hmm. I told him my yellow fever got robbed in Angola. And he was like, no, I don't believe you. Where's well, the police report? I said, I ain't got a police report, Geese, but I've got BBC News. Here's the article <laughs> with my face on it. And he went, and then he started showing it to all his friends. He's like, BBC News, man, running length of Africa. And then he was like, just chatting to me about it. And then they were all so gassed and they just let me through. That's really nice. Yeah. That's genuinely lovely. The last couple of days I've only managed 30k and then like 36k yesterday, pretty much exclusively walking. So today I've decided that we're going to take a little pause till the afternoon to see where I'm at. I did a malaria test yesterday and it said negative. Got quite a lot of like COVID-y symptoms. Jamie was like, maybe it's COVID. It actually could be. Um, migraine, like behind my eye. My muscles are really fatigued. I'm just knackered. I've got a cold, blocked ears, blocked nose. Well, I keep having like sweating phases, but even you do as well, Geese, don't you look at your shirt? No. That's not a phase, that's a constant state of being. Okay, if you have your your nice chill relaxation session. Eat Snickers. Eat your Snickers, not I sponsored. I eat a one today, I should probably lay off. Oh boy. <laughs> With my stomach two stepping by proxy of excessive Snickers consumption, me and Gus headed to the Ivorian Embassy to collect our visas. However, Gus embarked on yet another side quest. I just uh, found a guy yeah. uh, with loads of uh, coconuts, and he actually he, f he freshly cut open coconuts, especially for me. Filled up this bottle. What? Do you know how much this is? One and a half liter of coconut, fresh coconut water. How much? One thousand. Really? Mate, in Europe, how much would you reckon that would be? A one and a half litre of pure coconut water? Wow. <laughs> 20, 30? A lot of money. Yeah, not. Whilst me and Gus were dotting the I's and crossing the T's at the Ivorian Embassy, Stan and James decided to see what the Beninese beaches were saying. It was Stan's last night before heading off on a much deserved break from the mission, so him and Gus decided to indulge in some of the local Beninese liquor. We're going to try some traditional African drinks. We all need three. Now we're going to try the creme de la creme action bitters, see me all the way through Nigeria. Cheers. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, I'd say it's got notes of traditional African herbs <laughs> um, and brandy flavour. Brandy flavour. It's not even distilled, they just get the flavourings and then just add pure alcohol. It's vibe. 
The nice thing about uh, Action Bitters, their the package thing is recyclable. You should throw it in the trash can. That's only for 18 plus. Sorry, where where is the trash can? Shh. Oh, shut up. Shut up. Drink responsibility, not for drunk women. Pregnant, <laughs> pregnant women. All this pound pound of pine food we've got in the UK. Action Bitters. Sponsored. It's an official sponsor of the mission. <laughs> You can go away. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's quite a sight. <laughs> when I was in the van, I heard like liters come out. And then I like, come out of the camp and like only like a few milliliters come out maybe. This is slander. So how are you feeling? Yeah, really good. Mm. I enjoyed the drinks from Africa. The next morning, Gus dropped off a hungover stand to the airport. Thank you for joining me, mate. Fuck you. <laughs> well, fuck you. Feelings. Have a good time. Bella. With all the lads excited to live a standless life for a couple of weeks, it didn't take long before the team was dealt with another major blow. Hi. Bonsoir. Okay. This is nice. Hello, boss man. <laughs> yeah. Hello man, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. And you too, man. Hopefully. You doing well? Yeah, and yourself? Yeah, not bad, mate. Not bad. James, Jamie. F there's, there's a lot of J's. Yeah, a lot of J's. <laughs> the team had been infiltrated from one too many J's for my liking, so I decided I needed a bit of alone time to recalibrate the mental juices. Just wondering, what did you do today? Didn't do a lot, lad. Gonna try and run tomorrow, see how that goes. Need to make some moves, man. Lots of slow progress recently which ain't really been ideal, but it is the game. What would you do if you were me right now? Sometimes I'm like, I should probably just take time off until I feel good. And then I'll get to this evening and be like, fuck it, I'm gonna try and run tomorrow. Yeah. And then I'll probably run tomorrow and it'll be shit. And, and maybe I'll make it worse. Like this is what happened a few days ago. Like I think probably like when it got like really bad, taking probably right down just a few days rest, I think. My life had fixed itself by then, if you just had like a one go, just had a few days of rest. Yeah. But then two days ago I also, I um, could barely open my eyes, could barely stand on my legs. Then I went swimming for an hour, felt much better. <laughs> I actually find it, uh, uh, people actually might think I'm chatting shit, but I genuinely way prefer it to just be, I would way prefer to be running. When I'm in a routine of running 60k or more every day, then like, feels efficient, things are moving, we're going, it's good. When we're just stuck, when we're just stuck in a fucking car park, mooching about, I feel like shit. The next morning, Gus greeted James with a fresh fruit salad. Oh, Gus, Gus, Gus. So James greeted me with the soothing care that I needed. Are you feeling sorry for yourself this morning? Uh, uh, maybe a little bit. <laughs> I thought you were just gonna be like, never. <laughs> so, Roy, Dim, what's your plan of action for today, Russell? Action, right, we're gonna go. I can feel a watery poo coming out of my bum right now, so I'm gonna immediately okay. go head to the toilet after I finish this conversation. People do say that when you speak about action, it really affects the uh, retentions, but. Affects the retention? Yeah. F you. F your feelings. I'm gonna go running for a bit, see how it goes. So Jared got here yesterday? Oh uh, yeah, the return of that t <laughs> Where is he? Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> How was your reunion and in Nelly for the first time coming back? Warm. Very, very oh, warm. Yeah. <laughs> so hot. Oh mate, when you were away, I was asking the boys, are they gonna defend their bottom bunks? Did they do it or did you re- Oh shit, which bunk did I you just- I climbed into a bottom bunk last night because the top bunk's still full of all my shit. But I'm gonna fight James my bunker already. Yeah, that sounds like a great plan. Yeah, take my bunk back. I'm excited to see that. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be good. I think, Russ, we'll just have to hit him with a bit of agility, you know what I mean? I might not have big arms, but I carry a knife. Yeah. You scared of more. <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs> I think we're both incredibly intimidating masculine men as well, don't you, Jared? Not really. <laughs> <laughs>
With two of the three Jays tussling for their position in Nelly's sleeping arrangement, I decided to check in for round number one of the tarmac games on Beninese asphalt after a couple of days rest. So, first day properly in Benin, ready to run. But that's it. I'll just see how it goes. I feel like I've recently just used the bash it into the ground method quite a lot. Yeah. It's not really seeming to work. Yeah. So I'm actually more open to playing it a little bit more, say, in terms of just trying to get my body back to 100%. Yeah. Because it's still, well, it's not going to be at 100%, at least in like 80% would be nice. It's still a long way to go, 7,000 Ks or something stupid. Okay. Right. Are we ready to bang bang skeet skeet? Yes. Settle into the first of not so many rounds versus the Beninese paving patrol, I was looking for an early knockout. I was re-energised and stomping my lower body with vigour once again. Meanwhile, Gus decided to treat James once more with a local confectionery. James? Is it Gustavo? Jamie, what, <laughs> what do you reckon is it? Is it another pancake? Ladies and gentlemen, tell me what it was. It's no tartar sauce from my cod, Gus. I would say it's a deep fried bread, garlic inside, and if you eat, if you go further, there's even a boiled egg inside, chopped up. And there we go. It's a tiny bit of yolk. Is that a fat? Is that a fat that I for today? Very good. Very good. Is that from her? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst James was too busy complimenting the wrong Slim Shady, I was perhaps a little too hasty in my opening innings in Benin. I set off well, but my reoccurring injuries soon crept right back up to me. Woke up this morning, thought, today is a new day. We'll see what happens. Got on road, ran two and a half K. Legs, battered. Absolutely mashed up, don't know what was going on. Started walking, thought that full progress, still full progress. Made it to 18.5k, which is where I'm at now. Feels like I've run 100k. Pace is currently 11 minutes, 11 seconds a k. So, got no energy. I feel like I've lost all my ability to run. It's gone. It's just absolutely gone. Basically, all in all, very frustrated because I have no idea what this problem is. The last two weeks have just been like a weird amalgamation of different symptoms flying in sticking around not really leaving and then another symptom taking over and being even more potent and now we're at the point where it's just like my body essentially just feels totally useless mm. i'm trying to do everything i can to see like right maybe let's just chuck a painkiller and all sort yourself out that didn't work get on the phone to physios they recommend me a bunch of stretches i do all them take some rest ease off the intensity eat some more food blah 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 mm. maybe it's malaria let's take a malaria that's not malaria who knows actually what's going on and even worse than that i don't know how to solve it which is very frustrating i think we go and see a voodoo doctor or something tomorrow i think that's the best bet we've got right now get yeah. the serpents out get the cobras out yeah okay let me leave you alone yeah okay shopper bang bang right time for me to f off in it time to bang bang skeet skeet with nothing seeming to better my back pain, I was becoming increasingly frustrated. So I went back out on road to decide whether it'd be worth taking one last throw of the dice to see if a spot of voodoo could cure my injuries. Good morning, Russell Cook. Good morning, bruv. Still feeling the pains? Yeah. So what are we gonna try to do? <laughs> so Benin is famous for like, somewhat like alternative healing processes whether it be for your marriage or your body <laughs> yeah i don't really know much about it but we've come here to learn more about it starting off with this place which is called temple the python my name is uh, didier Adufi. didier nice, nice to meet you within this temple reserve the python's here as god because in the past they protected our crops and our farms against rats rodents and insects so in this temple, the pythons that we have here are royal pythons. Those who are kept here, we don't feed them here. So we open the door and let them out. They go out and plant themselves in forest, in people's houses. So they don't come back like that. It's real, but most of them are brought by the dwellers. 
whether they see them in the houses or in their farms, they have to break them here. Here in this town, no one kills python field. The python is secret here and everyone knows that. And if you were to kill a python, um, what would be kind of the repercussion? Something can happen to you, maybe your business. You know, things will start moving bad for you. Bad karma, basically. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Bad for you. I get the python. Okay. Perfect. Um, I hope you're not feeling scared. <laughs> Are you shaking right now? Trembling, mate. Trembling. <laughs> How's he feeling today? Good. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have a name? You can name them. What would you name it, Russ? Tarmac. Tarmac. <laughs> okay. You want to try it on like me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just chilling, eh? It fits you like a Hocker Bondi. Perfect. <laughs> oh, he likes the beard. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's heavy, isn't it? Yeah. And how often do they eat? Oh, uh, once a month. Once a month. month. It takes them a lot of time to digest. What? Is there any other misconceptions about voodoo that people don't always, you know, people think that voodoo is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they think that it's witchcraft, it's black magic. What separates voodoo from black magic? Yeah. Voodoo gives a value to love, peace, harmony. Voodoo never does that. And when you say voodoo, it's the social organization of life. And voodoo is the animistic belief in the four elements of the nature. Water, fire, air, and earth. There's love, they accept you so as you are. Peaceful. They don't mind your religion, they don't mind who you are. Okay. Black or white, so they don't yeah. mind how they can come here and worship the God with them. Amazing. So it seems you at the end. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Interesting. Didn't really know much about voodoo, to be fair. Yeah, I must admit, I'm, I'm guilty of the whole confusion of voodoo and witchcraft, like yeah, the, the yeah, misinterpretation. Yeah, and, yeah. Should we... Uh, Should we bounce? Okay, so POA, you're gonna go... I don't even think there's any point trying to run, man, like my mustache. Mm. Um, gonna take a long walk. Yeah. See how far we can get by about upper six, and then collect you. Yeah. See you in a bit, lads. Do you have any uh, final points of wisdom for us today? None. None. Same price me. Brain no work today. <laughs> well, bang bang, skeet skeet. Yeah. Enjoy it, sir. See you in like six hours. Truth be told, I was getting sick of talking about all my problems regarding injuries and deciding how I'll combat them. Moving forward, I made my mind up that I was going to stop pouring petrol on the flame that do be negativity. We keep this party going, through the ups and the downs, through the wind and the rain, through the sun and the shine, through the tar and the mac, till the poo dribbling down my leg reaches my ankles and the fluff from my chinny chin chin reaches my bum hole. We've come too far just to come this far. Till the bitter end, see you in tune to the easier. In the next episode, the boys walk a broken bridge, we enter Ghana and we meet some fellow Brits abroad. <laughs>